When I was a teenager growing up, I used to think that 33 was really old and that you have to be obviously really smart as a 33 year old. I'm a little past 33. I realized, first of all, it's not that old. Perspective teenagers, okay, it's not that old. And you're not inherently really smart as a 33 year old, which makes it even more profound what Jefferson wrote in the declaration as a 33 year old man encapsulating so many brilliant thoughts. And and I wanna read a couple we'll probably recognize. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed. This is really a brilliant synopsis of the American philosophy, but let me, let me unfold a few things. And I wanna start with what he starts in this phrase. We hold these truths to be self-evident. See, we live in a culture today that isn't sure truth even exists anymore. Now, let me tell you as a Christian, if you don't understand the foundation of truth being God and founding God's word, then we have a different problem, right? Truth exists. It's found in the person of Jesus. John 14, 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Truth does exist, we find in God's word. With all that being said, the founding father said there is truth that we are basing our actions, our behavior, our decisions on. And this is what Jefferson said they believe to be true. He said that that all men are created equal, that that we've been given rights by God and that government exists to protect those God-given rights. I would also point out that a lot of people today, when, when we read the declaration, we hear, well, Jefferson might have written that all men are created equal, but he really only cared about equality for white people. I would challenge you, go back and read Thomas Jefferson's original draft of the Declaration. Because the Declaration that we know today was the final version approved by Congress. John Hancock said they could only include in the Declaration what everybody agreed to, which is why the final Declaration says the unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. Everybody had to agree to it. When Jefferson originally drafted the Declaration and he had a listing of all the grievances, the problems we had with the king, the longest grievance in the entire declaration was a grievance against slavery. He said, we've had several colonies try to end slavery and the king actually vetoed the laws and and we've had several colonies try to stop the importation of slaves. And and here's where it gets interesting. He said, the king has enslaved these men, bringing them from their continent across the sea to this continent to put them in perpetual slavery. But he said, the king has enslaved these men And if you go back and read that grievance and and look for it, that you can find Google images, look at his handwritten document. When he says men, he puts it in full caps locks, capital M-E-N. He says, the king has enslaved these men. Why does that matter? Because when Jefferson wrote that all men are created equal, he was recognizing something much deeper than what most of us understand the declaration to mean today, that everybody in all of the universe made in God's image, there is equality in that. Now, I don't have time to go a lot deeper than that, but let me just back up. He says that these are truths we see from God, but notice he also said that we hold these truths to be self-evident. Self-evident means it's obvious. I want you to think about this for a second. Is it obvious in the world that everybody's equal or that we all have rights from God or that government exists to protect those rights? Because it's not obvious in China. It's not obvious in Russia. It's not obvious in most of the Middle East. It's not obvious in most of Europe. It's not obvious in most of Africa or Central and South America. So why would they say these were obvious? Because also it's worth noting, these were not obvious in the king's eyes, right? Like the king didn't agree with any of this. Who were these truths obvious to? These truths are only obvious to people who know what the Bible says. Because if you know what the Bible says, it's from the Bible that we learn that God made them in his image, male and female, he created them in his image. This notion of equality comes because we recognize that we have a creator God. And I think it's also super interesting that if you look at the story of creation and Adam and Eve, the Bible does not tell us what shape, size, or color Adam and Eve were. You wanna know why? Because that doesn't matter. We live in a world We live in a world that pretends like your shape, size, and color determine part of your value. That is not biblical at all. But see, if you know the Bible, you recognize that God made us male and female in his image and our value comes because we were made in the image of God. 